Hello and welcome back to my RC channel. Today I'm going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of these two cheap two-axis gimbals. Now I bought these both from banggood.com. This one was £31 and this one was £41. However, I do believe that they have reduced the price of this one. So what I'm going to do is straight out of the box sit them on my quadcopter this is the Turnergy SK450 with a extended landing gear skid and I'm going to use the same rubber grommets that you get with this one. I did notice the rubber grommets that you get with this one are really weak and I did a couple of initial tests and it was really shaky so I have ditched those and I'm going to be using these ones and also the same top plate as well. This one you do get a slightly lightweight top plate and I should say its sort of selling point is lightweight. You can see there the difference between this one and this one. This one is all sort of metal and caged and this one is hollow even down to the point that the camera platform is thinner. Okay so that's sort of the, the, the two physical differences. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try some different cameras on the same day, so same weather conditions so that it's fair, and I'm going to use different cameras and that's why I have gone for these cheap gimbals because the majority of expensive gimbals out there just seem to fit the GoPro and I want to use different cameras with this. So I have made a couple of modifications before we get onto the cameras. This one here did come with a balance lead on here instead of a JST connector, so I've connected a JST connector there. And on this one, there was a little bit of play in the plate, so I've added a little bit of hot glue and that seems to have sorted that out. I should say with this more expensive one, it turned up with a defective motor. There was play in the motor and I could see when I got it straight out of the box and that would have caused movement. Now one thing that I have learnt from setting up these gimbals is that any kind of movement or anything like that is going to just destroy your image. So Banggood actually sent me a new motor. Uh, just be aware that, you know, even though this is the more expensive of the two, I've actually had more problems so far with this one than this one. So another difference is the controller board. It only seems to be different on appearance here, but I think they are slightly different versions of the board. This one definitely initializes much quicker than this one. So these are the cameras that I'm going to use. We have a Mobius wide angle lens here, but I've put it in one of those Hobby King cases that you can buy and also added a few coins to it as well to make it the same weight as a GoPro. It's not really necessary, to be honest. Um, you only kind of need this really if your gimbal only accepts the GoPro size. But yeah, there is there is that option there. So secondly, we have a normal Mobius in a case. However, you might notice the case has been modified slightly. And that is because if you just put the Mobius in the case as stock, you notice that there's a lot of play on this tripod screw here and there's also a little bit of play on the case so I've hot glued it into the case and also hot glued it at the bottom there and that seems to work that gets rid of a lot of the play and the last camera is the Xiaomi Yi camera which is my favorite camera at the moment and this one shoots in 60 frames per second now what I like about these two options is that you can take one of these tripod screws and screw it underneath here like that you can see there's plenty of holes here whereas if you're using the GoPro sort of style case you get one of these with it and that loops through here and fits around the camera however it doesn't fit around the Xiaomi Yi but it doesn't matter because I'm using this. As you can see here this lighter gimbal here has got a much thinner arm out here and that does actually cause a problem because my tripod screw becomes too long and the camera doesn't actually fit snug against there so what I've had to do is put a little washer over the screw which is not needed on this one so it's a little bit of an annoying thing there straight away this one has been much easier to just put on the quad and much quicker setup. 
both of these gimbals are using open source controller boards. So they use the simple BGC software. However, I'm not really going to go into that at the moment because I want to see how these perform straight out of the box. They're advertised as performing straight out of the box. So we're going to literally just strap them to the quad and stick a camera on them. So let's check out the different weights of these two. This is the more cheaper one, which is heavier. That's 181 grams. And then the second one, this is 144 grams. So that's a 37 gram saving for this one, which is quite a lot if that's important to you. One thing that I've noticed on this, the cheaper one, is that it's got a bigger sensor underneath and you can see that the wire actually gets in the way of the tripod screw there, whereas on the more expensive one, it's got a much smaller sensor here. All this is, cut, is foam there and the wire is on the other side. Another thing I've noticed as well is this one, the screws at the back do slightly catch eventually on this arm here. And can you see there? So you're only going to be able to go down that much in pitch if you're connecting it to the receiver which i'm not for this test whereas the more expensive one completely goes all the way around so let's connect this up and see how long it takes to initiate quite a while there you see but it's not best initiating it on the bed because it's not level always initiate them on a level surface and you've got this button here which is is on both of them the boards are on different orientations but here what this button does right because this one straight out of the box wasn't level the when you put the camera on it didn't sit level and what you can do is if you single press the button there and I'll just do that on this one if you single press the button the gimbal will go loose and then you can quickly hold it with your hand and then let go and it stays in that position so that's the first button and again you want to be doing this on absolute level surface. If you do two presses of the button, it calibrates the gyro and th three presses calibrates the accelerometer or it's the other way around, I can't quite remember. Okay, so it's the same for both of them. You can go into the settings and change that sequence, but I'm not gonna bother with that. So I've got the second one plugged in and you can see a problem because this motor has got this hollow case on it. It's actually quite light compared to the camera and you can see here that without any power the camera is weighted to one side. Now the best thing to do with gimbals is to try and get the weight even but that's not possible with this. It won't go any further on here. Um, because of the sensor. I I'm sure if I use the strap I could get it to weigh better but that's a, it's a slight disadvantage of this one being more lightweight. So let's plug it in and you can see there it initiates much much faster and again the buttons on the front here so we can press the button again and very quickly select where we want it to stay this first video is the cheaper gimbal, the heavier gimbal, and it's got a Mobius underneath it. It's just in the normal Mobius holder, and it's performing really well. Now, Mobius is quite difficult to set up on a gimbal. I think it's to do with its weight, because it's lighter than a GoPro, and also its size. These gimbals are designed for sort of a GoPro platform. Now you can see here as I yaw around, the only problem with the cheaper gimbal is it does seem to struggle to level the horizon. You can see there that it was slightly at an angle and now that we've, we've sort of stayed still for a while, it, it stayed the same, but any kind of yaw movement sort of sends that out and it, it's sort of doing it again here. And I think that is a limitation of the board that is on this one. Uh, I think it's the cheapest and oldest version of the board. I just do a low shot here just to show the smoothness uh, at sort of uh, low altitude and it's it's doing really well. We yaw round though and it's it's got that slight angle on it so I may have to 
change the board over. Now this is the second gimbal, the lightweight one, the more expensive one, and I think straight away you can see some slight buffeting, some slight vibration. I was really surprised about that because to hold in your hand and on the quad it looked like this was the more stable of the two, but it isn't. What it does do is it does find the horizon better, but this one does have a slightly better board, I think, a, a newer version, but it's not good for stable shots. I mean, look, it's, it's vibrating, it's shaking. I certainly wouldn't want to use this footage in a sort of a professional manner, so yeah, really disappointed so far with it but we are just on the first camera we've got two other cameras to try so maybe it just doesn't suit the Mobius sort of platform I thought it would though because it's more lightweight and therefore it would suit a more lightweight camera you would think but no nah, it's not it just seems to be being affected by the wind and the resistance from the props this is a low shot again, you can see we've got movement, vibration up and down. I mean, tell me what you think in the comments, right? Am I being harsh on this? I, I, To me, I think this is, isn't good enough. I think it's vibrating and uh, I want it as smooth as possible and to me, the other one is smoother. So here, again, we have the first gimbal, the heavier gimbal, the cheaper gimbal, with the Mobius in its GoPro 3 case. And I don't think the case actually improves the, the footage at all compared to the first one, but it does give it that GoPro form factor. And if you've got one of those gimbals that requires a GoPro 3 or whatever fitting, then I think uh, this you know is going to be good for you. But from this instance, using that case hasn't made a difference to the quality and also adding extra weight so that it's the same weight as a GoPro hasn't made a difference either. Some people say that if you add coins to a Mobius or, or extra weight that you'll get better performance. Certainly with this gimbal, I've not, I've not noticed that. So there you go. You can see here where you're around and it, it is really random whether it gets the horizon level or not. That, that's the thing I'm going to look into with this. And so here again, can see slightly more shaky this is the the second gimbal the more expensive of the two and it, it started and we have like a shaky takeoff but then as we're flying around it stables out a little bit but as I get higher it just starts to bob around it starts to shake it's not performing as well as the first one so out of these two definitely gonna pick the first one uh, for my daily use. I'm not sure what to do with the second one, but we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, again, it's it's getting the horizon better, so maybe I'm going to take the board out of this second one and put it in the first and see if with the extra weight and the motors that it performs better, because I can't use this. I, I, I wouldn't use it. And you can see here, low down, getting some shakiness. It's just not smooth at all. But keeping the keeping the yaw better. So this one, this is my favorite camera, guys. It's the Xiaomi Yi camera, and this is on the cheaper gimbal, uh, and it just performs brilliant. This is a great camera to use with this gimbal. Uh, definitely less kind of shakier than the Mobius, so I think that's probably down to the fact that this has got a better sensor than the Mobius. Um, it's definitely on the yaw with the Mobius, some slight jerkiness compared to this one, but you can see here start to ascend and the uh, the horizon isn't as level as, uh, as the other one um, and it kind of sort of starts to level out, but really struggling with this one, uh, which is a shame because the gimbal is working really well. Uh, I wanted to do my low swooping shot here, but I got a bit distracted. Uh, a dog started to chase me, as that often happens. But you can see still from this that we've got some pretty smooth video and the horizon kind of behaving itself 
there as well. So this is the second gimbal, the Dira gimbal with the Xiaomi Yi, and I'm afraid it's not a very long video of this, and you'll see why in a minute, but hopefully it uh, will give you some indication to what it's like. Now, again, it's working much better with this Xiaomi Yi camera, but still not perfect more usable maybe but still getting a slight bit of vibration there and the horizon slightly going out of whack as well but what happens in a minute is really strange the the quadcopter it's if it loses a motor or an ESC gets overpowered or something I've not had it since but start flying towards myself and just it completely goes out of control there and crashes and it's never good when your gimbal lands on the ground before your quad it's doubly not good when a dog comes across and tries to steal it so it completely smashed the gimbal with its with it being lightweight it completely bent and wasn't really usable again after this crash as I mentioned, after the crash, this thing got really broken and bent. Because it's really lightweight, though, I was able to sort of bend it back into shape, but the thing just doesn't work as it was doing. You can see there that this has become bent here. Yeah, it's not working as it was doing. Uh, I think something's broke somewhere, some wire or something, because when I try to get it to connect up, the thing just starts twitching like crazy. So it didn't survive the crash. However, this one, uh, I have crashed with and there wasn't a mark on it because it's more heavy duty there was no bending of any material all this is a lot thicker so yeah not good for this one so in conclusion I'm gonna stick with the cheaper one it performs better and I didn't have to go in and change any of the settings as for the other one um, it's not of any use to me at all yeah it's lightweight but you know, if it doesn't work, that's no good. The one thing I'm going to take away from this, though, is that this board does seem to be a little bit better than this one. So, hey, I might swap this out and put it in that one, and then I might have a really, really good gimbal. One thing that's for sure, though, is that gimbals are a bit of a mixed bag. They're not the easiest to set up, and even once you have got it set up, a two-axis gimbal is still going to have some shakes because there's no stabilization on the yaw so if you've got a quadcopter that's doing this you're gonna get shaky video so I guess the next thing for me to do is to try out a three axis gimbal isn't it but once again thanks for watching please continue to subscribe cheers